so i think um, attendees are still log uh, like logging in we have around 25 26 people who are already here so we can wait for a minute and we can start Shall we start? Yes, we can start. Yes. Uh, so, are you seeing my screen? See my own, it's loading somehow, but okay, now I can see. Fine. Um, Okay, I hi everyone. I can't, I can't uh, see how many people are there yet. Hello? Yeah, yeah. Uh, currently 53 people have already joined. 53 have already joined. Good, good. All right. Um, yeah, then in that case, we can uh, start. Not a problem. Okay. So uh, with us, we have Sanjay Sondi, who is also uh, um, an editor, one of the chief editors of Butterflies of India. We have Viraj Nauge, who is a PhD student in the lab and somebody who is collecting a lot of butterfly data uh, for our website, as well as for um, um, our butterfly monitoring uh, program. He also uh, does 30 minute counts on a regular basis so this is our core team right now for the website today and hopefully that and uh, fahim have all joined uh fahim has been doing a lot of work uh with the website and uh the of course is the editor of the odonata website we will uh, speak largely about the butterfly website today because of the big butterfly month we are essentially uh, doing this program as a general introduction to the whole platform, the whole BioAtlas uh, India platform, which has the moth website, the dragonfly, damselfly website, and the cicadas and reptiles and amphibians and so on. So total, we have eight websites. So whatever we discuss today applies to all the other websites too, but we'll just keep this as our uh, main focus because of the big butterfly month, but you should be able to use the same uh, introduction to any other website. Yeah. So for those who are not familiar with the website, I'll quickly give you key points of uh, how the website is organized, and then we'll move on to the mobile app. And I will also show you how to upload um, images, how to contribute data, and then how things are organized there. Yeah. So those who already knew the website, you will see that the new platform is a lot more uh, modern, a lot more rich. Uh, from the homepage, you can see there's a sliding window. Latest contributions are highlighted here. There's a species of the day which in certain areas, not in a few other areas, but uh, this shows that we have highlighted contributions, contributor of the uh, month, contributor of the year. These are automated now. And of course, we have some useful links. So this is the basic uh, framework of the website. Sister websites uh, list all the eight websites that we have, participating institutions. And like most other more websites we have a fairly mobile friendly this one is so most of the uh, links that you will need have been moved to the extended menu um, columns at the bottom and then we have some other information we have bioatlas india uh, platform introduced here along with our butterfly publications and all the um, websites are listed here so that you can jump from one website to another easily 
Now, if you go to a species page, we have retained some of the earlier structure. For example, the taxonomic breadcrumbs are on top. If you want to go from uh, one species to the entire genus um, Denaus, which is tigers here, then you can see all the species which are under that particular genus. Similarly, you can go to higher taxonomic categories and look at, for example, all the uh, brush-footed butterflies, the entire nymphalidae family, if you like, so that you know what you have seen is either a uh, tawny tiger, like these three species that you see here, or perhaps milkweed butterfly, the brush-footed butterfly, you can go to that category and then browse so that you can compare images and then uh, maybe try to check which is the butterfly you have seen. And if you think that this plain tiger is the butterfly that you have seen, then you can just click on that image or the name and it will take you to the plain tiger uh, page. Yeah, this is how navigation works here. So on the plain tiger uh, species page, I'll demonstrate the key features of the website and species pages particularly, and then we'll go to contribution of uh, observations. So here you will see that uh, we have the genus and species uh, name, scientific name of the butterfly. These are the author and year in which the species was published. And plain tiger is the English name. There's a uh, image here, which is the default image of the species. And this is something that you will see in the mobile app as well. Mobile app extracts all the data from the website. So they are connected in that uh, manner. Then we have subspecies in India. There will also be taxonomic notes for species which have that. If you don't have a particular section without any information, that section will be hidden, which is why you don't see taxonomic notes here. So taxonomic notes are given for a few species, such as, let's say, uh, Tony Coster. And then we have conservation and spatial status. Here, this is not legally protected in India under any schedules. Uh, for species which, have, which are state butterflies, for example, Blue Mormon or uh, Burwing, there we will add um, its status as the state butterfly. So these things will be mentioned here. For legally protected species, the legally protected status will be given here. Schedule one, schedule two, schedule four, or if it's an internationally uh, protected species, for example, by IUCN uh, schedule, uh, IUCN categories, then we'll mention those things here. Then you have the photo gallery in which we have the top images which show variation in a species. You can click on any of the image and it will open up in a large format where you can see all the details. And this works both on the uh, on a laptop as well as on the mobile phone. And here then you have the main gallery where all the images which are contributed for this species are shown here. And we now follow a strict three by uh, N format, so three columns, and then number of rows depends on how many entries we have. If we have only one to three images, then there'll be a single row of images. If there are hundreds of images, then what you will uh, see is that the image gallery, you can scroll. Again, if you want, you can just click on an image and it will open up in a large format. And then you can scroll left and right so that you can go from one image to another to see what kind of variation there is. Yeah? So this is how all the information is uh, organized using images. And if you go to the bottom, um, it says load more. So first 99 images will be displayed here. If you click on load more, then uh, another 99 images will be loaded so that page loading is faster. This is how we have uh, organized it now. Earlier on our older website, all the images would load at the same time. So page loading was a little bit slower and most people don't even want to see all the images perhaps. They just want to see representation, which is given here. And as you can see here, we have given, for example, uh, mail on this particular uh, image. So this particular spot is found only in the mail. If there's a female uh, image somewhere here, this, for example, it says female. So for every single image that is submitted to our website, we make sure that information such as male, female, wet season form, dry season form uh, is given, along with the place where the butterfly is photographed, the date on which it was photographed, the person who photographed it, and of course, the subspecies level scientific name and English name are here. And each image, each observation has a media code so that you can identify it using uh, that particular uh, media code. Yeah? 
and this is again 99 images, but this is a very common species. So we have way more than 200 here. So again, you can load more and so on and so forth. And if you click on this uh, top arrow, it will take you to the top of the page since the pages can become long when we have hundreds, if not thousands of image per species. So this is how it's organized. So species pages are organized like this. This is photo gallery of the adult butterflies. Then we have early stages where you can see eggs, caterpillars, pupae of species where early stages images are available. So this is what I've seen here under the early stages tab. And you can see certain behaviors here. For example, the caterpillar is cutting out the leaves so that it drains out excess uh, fluid, the toxic compounds which are in this host plant. So you can see all these uh, behaviors as well as the phenotypes of these things. There's a parasitoid here. It's a braconoid, a braconoid wasp, which is what it shows here. So you can see the entire bi biology. Here is another kind of a parasite here. This is called a tachinid fly. And this is the puparium of that particular fly. So you have tremendous amount of information on this website about not only the adult butterflies, but also their early stages, species with which they interact and so on and so forth. Under distribution, you have the distributional map of the species based on the records which are submitted to the Butterflies of India website. And as you can see, all over India except in the Himalayan region and again, hilly parts of the Northeast, but otherwise it occurs everywhere. And then you have uh, identification notes, status, habitat, and habits. Here you can see in each state across this uh, year how many butterflies are seen. And at the bottom, of course, you can see that this butterfly is uh, a lot more common from about um, uh, April to uh, October or November. Rest of the time, it's slow, but it, it occurs throughout the year, so on and so forth. And then under larval host plants, you have information on which species are used by the butterfly uh, in, in the larval stages. And down below, you have images of the species which it uh, uses. So here you have Calotropy gigantea, which is one of the most common uh, uh, larval host plant of the species. And then you have Seropegia, which is used occasionally. You have Asclepias curasavica, a really beautiful plant, which is again used very commonly uh as a lava lose plant so you have uh information on the lava lose plants as well in case you want to find their caterpillars and uh, look at their life cycles and then we have references uh which may or may not have uh things here but slowly we are populating all this information on uh, butterflies of india website as well as the moths of india website moths of india website sanjay can uh, add here if he uh, wishes I think has references for every single species page. Since references on moths are scarce, on butterflies will develop it slowly, but we have a lot of information already on the website for every species. So this is how the basic website is structured. Uh, does anybody have any questions about this? If you have, then you can just put them in the chat box and I will pick them up. Uh, Viraj, can you please yeah. help me with this? Yeah. Krishnami, they, they are posting questions uh, in the Q&A se section. We already Great. have uh, one. So. Good. Can you Good. access So, it? Sanjay and um, uh, Viraj, if you see any questions which can be addressed now regarding the features that we have talked about, just let me know. If there are general questions, we can get to them at the end. Yeah. But if there are questions which are better answered now, then let's do that now. Yeah. Okay. No. Just keep going for now. Uh, okay, yeah. fine, fine. So this is how the basic website is organized. There's one more thing which uh, we didn't have on the earlier website. Well, it sort of was there, but it's going to be on our new, which is that uh, I mentioned this is completely mobile. So if you're on, if you're using a mobile, the view is going to be a lot better here, and um, you can act as much easier. Here, advanced search and advanced search. 
search for few species names. So, for example, if I start searching plane, yeah, this is the plane tiger. We are already on the page. But if I start searching plane tiger, it will show us options for all the plane butterflies with plane in their name. And then if you are looking for, let's say, plane Tony Raja, you can just click on that and it will take you to that page. Advanced search has several features which we'll demonstrate at the end if you have time and if people are particularly interested. Word search works similarly. Uh, word search doesn't have too many filters. Advanced search has a lot of filters by which you can filter information so that you get the result you want. This is how you can search for these pages. So when you're on the search and when you scroll down, this box remains. So this sticky mineral. So that when you scroll, that you are still the search box here, and at the top is the same. You can either search uh, species names here or here. It will take you to the same search. Yeah. So you can either search by English name or scientific name, and this is working great. One thing that we did not have earlier, which <coughs> is now included here is if you want to search for uh, plants, you can also search them here. So I'm searching for Calotropis and let's go to Calotropis Procera page and it will now display the Calotropis Procera page. Yeah. So there's again the default image you have image gallery here, which you can open and then you can circle uh, cycle between the images to see what the plants look like and so on and so forth. Yeah, these are the same images that you also saw on the plain tiger page, but this is now on the plant uh, uh, page. Now the great thing uh, you have here is that we have a section here now called Lavalos plant. And right now this uh, particular plant has not been uh, added as a nectar plant. So actually let me go to a plant species where I know we have that. Um, and that's Asclepias curasavica. Right, so we have Asclepius curasavica here. When you go to that page, you will see two sections. One is lavalose plants and one is nectar plant. Yeah, so this particular species, according to entries in our database, is used by these four species as lavalose plant and by this species as a nectar plant. So now we can actually, uh, as editors, we can go and make these entries on our website. And then we can keep adding these things, which for example, were not only, uh, only Lavalos plants, uh, plant records were shown. Now we have separated Lavalos plants and nectar plants. And again, if you want to go see what this species looks like, you can click here and it will take you to that page. Yeah. So this is the basic structure of the website. There's one important thing which we have not uh, really developed uh, much yet, which is uh, uh, identification keys. So we are, we have only two identification keys on the website so far. We do want to develop this a lot more, uh, but that will happen, I think, uh, uh, starting next year. So if you go to identification keys, let's see, here you have it in the bottom under species identifications, we have put it there for now. And this is where we'll add a lot more keys. This is one more feature, which is new on the website, they didn't exist on the previous website. Uh, let's see whether it's gonna load quickly. Okay, so, oh, actually we have several uh, more. These need to be added. Uh, feature keys, so that. And if you go to a key, it will show you the species uh, for which you have the uh, images. And then you can click again on these species and it will take you to that. Yeah, so uh, this is something that we want to develop. So if you're interested in uh, helping us with this, do uh, get in touch with us and we will uh, uh, help you get started with this. But this is another really nice feature that we have on the new website. Okay, so if there are any other questions about the functionality here itself, let me know. But these are the basics of uh, uh, what I wanted to tell you about the website. Then of course we have lots of pages on butterfly monitoring for ecology and conservation, butterflies under wildlife protection act, I've listed all the species 
which are legally protected in India uh, under Schedule 1, 2, and 4. And slowly we are connecting all these with the species pages for these uh, species. So this is something that we are actively doing. So you can now uh, actually go from the list to the species pages. This list wasn't there on our uh, earlier website, but now we have it. So we have all these things, user resources are being developed, user tutorials especially, it's something that we want to develop a large library of. We'll put those things on uh, YouTube and they'll be connected here so that you know how to do these. And even the video today is gonna to be uploaded uh, in user tutorials. This is just to um, introduce our, our website and the mobile app, yeah? So you can explore all these things. And if you have any questions, you can ask them at the end. Now, if you want to contribute to the website, what you can do is go to login. I have an account. But if you do not have um, an account, then you can create a new account. Actually, I'll just show you what uh, you, you need your account. You will get an email with a link to confirm your email address so that all the password reset. maintain that uh, those high standards which is why uh, these fields are important so please do uh, fill in all these things if you, can't, if you had an account on the pre site and you can't log in now when you early we have a email address as a username and now we have a username uh, uh, there which is re your registered name so that is what you will need. So in case you have forgotten your password, you the name, you can uh, reach password, yeah? And when you do that, please go to your profile and update the profile if you haven't done that. Okay, so I'm gonna log in using my login uh, credentials and uh, the view that you will see here is gonna be a little bit different than the of the account, whereas contributors you may have slightly fewer um, uh, controls, yeah. This is, uh, we are now at sub observations. So by default, when you log in, it goes to submit observations, but I will also show you uh, what it will look like when you go to the uh, site. Just a minute, let it uh, start that. Actually, I'll say user profile. And there you will have submit observations. And this form opens. There you can choose whether you are submitting observations or the butterfly or the plant, depending on which one you choose. Your uh, life stage as well as taxonomy is going to change. Let me go to butterfly. Life stage can be adult, adult in early stages, caterpillar, egg, and so on and so forth. Let me choose adult. And I'll actually choose butterfly taxon a little bit later. Let me first choose a um, an image. So let's see our two thousand. In, let's say Talevagi images and let's say you want to load this and say Maktesia. Yeah. So I have chosen that it will add it. And then since this is Ansimaktesia, I will start with that name. And it will show me uh, options for that. And Simaktesia, Tesia, I'm going to choose at the subspecies level. The image is being uh, uploaded. Then uh, we choose date, mother, gender, location. Location, you can start uh, typing. This one was at Tale Wildlife Sanctuary. So I will start typing that. Tale. So I will choose that. And you can choose other uh, information if you have it. Otherwise, ignore all of this. Go straight to choose copyright license. You can either choose copyright. Creative Commons, 
I'll explain to you later what these mean. Most people will choose copyrighted, which means that all your rights are reserved. And if you already know what Margot and Creative Commons means, uh, that is what license to which you contribute your images to this website. But you can just choose copyrighted, keep uh, this as save as draft, and then you can save it. Yeah. When you do that, then this goes into uh, uh, submitted observations. And then our reviewers and editors review this and then publish it. So when you submit the observation, this doesn't get onto the website immediately. We want all our observations to be thoroughly, um, thoroughly reviewed, thoroughly edited before they go online, so that all the data that we on the website are highly have this peer review before observations become available on the website. Yeah. So uh, over the last few months since I've been traveling, we are slightly slow at uh, clearing these observations which are submitted, for, but from next month, it will become a little bit faster when I get back to Bangalore. Okay, so this is how observations are submitted. And when you go to uh, your profile, you can see my contributions, submit observations, my profile, all those things, once you log in, will become uh, available as drop down options. So you can go to your profile, update it. If you want to see what your contributions are, you can click on my contributions and it will show you all you, all of your contributions which you can edit and so on and so forth here unfortunately right now on the new website the observations that you submitted to the previous website cannot be found there's a uh, there's an issue that we will uh, sort out later but all the observations that you contribute and uh, you will then have a record of all your observations yeah so once you log in, you have all the important information here. Okay. So this is the basic information about the website. Does anybody have any questions? Viraj or Sanjay, can you check whether there are any queries that we better uh, address now? There is a one question about I think you should demonstrate the advanced search at some point in time. Sure. Let's do that. Questions on that. Yeah. So let's go to advanced search. Yes, let's go to advanced search. Advanced search by contributors uh, is still being refined. So uh, contributors, photographer will work for all the new observations. It uh, will not work for the old observation, observations from the old website. But for example, I do know that Fahim has been uh, uh, contributing a lot of images recently. So I will choose Fahim. And then I will choose year as let's say 2022, and then I will apply that filter. So uh, you will also see the page, so you can put this on the observation submission form. So you have uh, you can search by uh, all those five stages. You can search by photographer. Taxon is the uh, higher category. For example, if you want to search everything of uh, Denaini, which is family and a tribe. So that's the milkweed butterfly. So if you want to search all the observations of higher taxon, and by that we mean genus, tribe, family level, and so on and so forth. Species names, English and scientific name, which is the same as the search box. And the uh, search here, and taxon will be genus level and above. So I'm going to delete that because we don't want to apply that filter. You can search media. So all the webs, all the images mentioned have a media code, right? So if you want to search by that, uh, you can get the. Just a minute, let me go back to the plain tiger page. There we go. So here all these media codes are given and all the new images, as you can see, have the BOI or MOI or ROI, depending on which website you're on, it has different um, uh, prefixes. And then you have three uh, letters followed by three numbers. That's your media code. Yeah. So when you want to search for specific media codes, you can search them. You can enter the media code here, here, here. If you want to search by the entire uh, uh, zone of that latitude and longitude, locations will uh, search for specific ones. And this is a new feature which we didn't have on the website. 
earlier you could only search up to district. Here we uh, have enabled finer search as well. Baksa, for example, we have two uh, locations here. Raja Bhatka, actually not two, only one. Raja Bhatka here under Baksa Tiger Reserve. So you can uh, click that, but I'm not going to do that right now. We want only Fahim 2022. Yeah, you want to know what are the butterflies that you have seen or somebody else has seen. And you can search that and we have already applied that. And these are the images that he has uh, submitted, which is the photographer and the... Uh, you can do any combination of the these filters and then apply which are relevant to your query okay if we do not want to do 2022 then you can apply that and it might show you more images if you do location we want to know only images that Fahim has uh, taken in Mumbai or if you don't want photographer you just want to know what are the images that people have uh, contributed of course somewhere in Arunachal Pradesh or Chiplun or whatever you want to search then you can search for that and um, uh, you could potentially do month. So for example, if you're visiting a place in May of a certain year or October of 2022, you could choose October and 2000, actually not 22, you just do October and apply and it will show you all the observations, all the species which have been recorded in October so that you know what to expect when you want to go to October uh, and let's say Baksa, yeah? So that is how you can use a combination of these filters to refine your uh, queries. Uh, so, so this is how advanced search works. What is just a simple search where you uh, type in anything that uh, you have, say, I want or search. Okay. So Krishna make, this, uh, yes. Krishna make Sanjay, there's a question. Yes, also. Sanjay. So I just want to state this in advanced search. Huh. E, uh, if you are searching by location, hmm. uh, typically there's a drop down. Right. However, so for example, if you want to search by Bhopal, huh. you can just write Bhopal and apply and it will give you all your Bhopal contributions. Right. So you don't necessarily need to select one of the drop downs. You can just put in a city and apply it, and it will still show you the uh, contributions right. from that. I mean, right. otherwise right. you'll yeah. maybe get a very uh, you know you get you will get observations from a very specific. Very specific. Area. Sure, sure. You can do by what city we want or... is apply that to of course uh, district, state, and country as well. So if you want everywhere from that particular state, you can uh, search by that as well. It doesn't have to be a specific location. Loca specific location is what I uh, uh, what I showed you right now, but we do want um, slightly broader location uh, searches as well. All right, any other questions? It's 6.36, so, so we should there's probably There's a move. question on whether advanced search can be done on the mobile app. It should be possible. I haven't checked that. I suppose it works. So, uh, so much to browse the website. Normally, I'm on my um, laptop when I'm working. So I've done that. But somebody can check and see. It should ideally work. I don't see any reason why it shouldn't. Anyway. Any other questions? So there, there are two questions from Sumit, which I think we can answer now. Uh, Sumit Joshi, he's saying that uh, uh, earlier contributions are not visible. I think the earlier contributions are visible. Uh, I think all the contributions on BOI were imported, right? So there's nothing that yes, was there. There are, I, I think, a few which uh, somehow are missing. If you remember, Purnendu had created a particular data structure earlier. And then uh, we changed it because of that. Uh, just a minute. So because of that, uh, I think some of the observations we have not been able to import. We have to do that. But um, almost everything has been imported. So if something is missing, uh, let me know. You can drop me an email and I will look into it. But as far as I know, 
um, I think some nine nine percent of the images have been imported. Only a few dozen uh, might be missing. Uh, for example, I do know uh, right now that Vivas's Sena images are missing, and there, there's that issue of folders. It was changed between the first version and the second version that was done, and therefore those images are not in the place where they were supposed to be. But apart from that uh, particular issue, uh, all the images were imported, including of flowerless plants and early stages and uh, adult butterflies and so on and so forth. So they should be there. If they're not there, they Email. There's another question from Sumit Joshi. Can we delete rectify our information regarding any submission since it was not previously working? What was not working? Can we delete rectify our information regarding any submission? Yes, you can. So you can go to your observations and then uh, edit those things. But you don't necessarily have to unless you have put in a wrong date or a wrong uh, uh, location, you don't have to necessarily correct it. If there's identification or other issues, reviewers and editors will catch that and they will correct it. Yeah. So don't worry about identification and other details. But for example, and also if you later happen to know something was a male or female and things like that, those things reviewers and editors add in the uh, in the form observation form when we review those observation forms so you can do it yes once you submit those and you can go to my contributions and from there you can edit those and you can see those entries but uh, we will also help you fill in that information which is missing mostly taxonomic information and uh, individual information individual meaning whether it's a male or female and uh, seasonal form and things like that Oh. About the advanced search, mm -hmm. it was asked about the mobile app rather than mobile browser. Oh, mobile app. Yes. Mobile app does not have advanced search. Mobile app, I think, only has search, which searches for the species name. But species names is basically what you're going to need there. You don't have, like the website, you don't have lots of pages where uh, you may need to search. And we don't have all the observations. We only I'll demonstrate now. So there you don't need advanced search, and therefore we don't have advanced search there. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's go to the mobile app now. That is something that we are really excited about. It's done really well, and I think it's going to be the next big thing in terms of the resources that are available to our uh, community. So let's go there. So I'll stop sharing from my laptop and I will start sharing from my uh, mobile phone. So here I go to the uh, lab. Guys, when you can see my screen, let me know in case this is slow. So this is the default screen. Uh, and of course I've uploaded, I've loaded this. Uh, when you first log in, you will get a sign-in screen. The uh, account that you create on Butterflies of India or Moths of India or any... website needed its own username and password the user database in other words was not shared across the websites but now it is shared across all the websites so if you have signed in on one website you can use the same user credentials on all the other websites which is a big relief so uh, you can freely go from one website to another once you uh, log in on any one of them yeah and the same username and password can be used on the mobile app as well. So when you get the welcome screen, just use your uh, website uh, login information and that will get you into the mobile app. What I uh, recommend is that you um, create your user account first on the website on a laptop. That seems to work out the easiest. It's also easier to do. And then of course that will work on the mobile app. You can also directly do it on the mobile app. Uh, you just have to remember that the password is high security password, which is going to be a combination of 
a minimum of eight characters and then you have uh, uppercase, lowercase words, um, a number and a special character. Yeah. And then you say you don't have uh, any pack. So add pack. And here you can uh, click on this plus sign below the circle. It will show you all the packs that are available. So what one is uh, you have two categories, and the second is select locations. Yeah. So here I think you can. Um, so here in animal groups you can select bird right now. That's the only one option that works right now. And then you have select location. So you can either choose particular, um, uh, what do you call, a particular, uh, let me actually show you. So we have a few cities, cities where we have a lot of contributors, Bengaluru, Chennai, Delhi, um, and then Kolkata, Mumbai, Mysuru. These are uh, shown. Plus we have Peninsular India. We have uh, 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 Jammu and Kashmir, UT. And we have, I think, uh, urban greeneries. Urban greeneries is a special one. Urban greeneries has about 200, 250 uh, species, which is the entire urban fauna of most of these cities. So if you are going from, let's say you're shuttling between Hyderabad and uh, uh, Mumbai and Bangalore. In each city, there may be a few species which are not in the other city. So if you are mainly restricted to counting butterflies or looking at butterflies in one particular city, you can choose a city uh, pack. Or if you're going to go from uh, city to city, you can choose urban greeneries pack. If you're going to be um, going to a larger area, let's say Kashmir uh, UT, for example, Jammu and Kashmir, then you can choose that and click OK and then save that. Yeah, Here you only have butterflies eventually when the moth team has done uh, their moth uh, apps, uh, I mean moth uh, uh, animal pack, then that will be available as well. So all websites essentially will have uh, mobile packs later on. So I've chosen butterflies and Bengaluru and then I can save, okay? When you save it, it will download all the data that is required for that pack. And I'm going to hit cancel right now because I don't need that. I have the butterflies in India pack done. And uh, that's something I want to launch. So you can click on launch or you can uh, use the back arrow from my pack here on top and it will take you to the screen. You have six screens, both similar to what you have on the website. We have a collapsible format where you, if you know what species you're looking at, you can go and click there. I've, I've clicked on uh, Karaksini and it will show us all the hubs and rajas. And if you want to look at, let's say, anomalous nawab, the first one, you can click on that and it will uh, load the anomalous nawab page. And here, the top one uh, is the default image, which is also there on the uh, website. So that is how it's drawn. And then here at the bottom, you have uh, six images. Yeah. So normally we have chosen as images for highly variable species. You ha may have nine or 12 or 21 images. You can have up to 21 images here. Yeah. So you can scroll here and you can see what the underside and upper side look like if there are different variations in this particular species. Uh, right now, this is downloading data since all the images have not been downloaded in my pack. So you can just see uh, all the variations there. If you click uh, right now, I'm on by default on the butterfly uh, uh, sign here. There are four icons there. The second icon is the caterpillar, which is early stages. There you can see it's early stages. And actually, let me do one thing. I think that's going to be a little bit better. And I'll tell you why. Here, let me search for plain tiger, which we looked at earlier. Yeah. So let us go to the plain tiger page again on the mobile app as well. Uh, and you can of course click on them and they will open up you can zoom in zoom out uh, if you want to see um, all the details and again you can go from one image to another uh, here 
this is somewhere you can zoom in and zoom out. That is the advantage. But you can close that view and it will go back to the species page. And here you have these six images. So this is a female, for example, um, as you can see, and this is a male. So you can see the variation that is shown here between male and female. This particular male is from Alcipoidus, which has whitish hindwing. So we have chosen these six images to represent all the variation and sometimes behaviors of that particular species. And if you click on the caterpillar, it will show you the list uh, here, uh, this image is being loaded. So this is the default image that you will see. And these images loading. So uh, once they are downloaded in the mobile pack, right now have the impact, this will download about 8,000 images. Depending on which packs you download, you may have fewer or more images. Since I downloaded this pack when I was in we are loading that page yeah and then if you click on the map it will show you a map of the same map that you will see on the website this is fetching data in real time so if you have the internet it will fetch data from the website and slowly uh, you will see the map so here the map has been uh, loaded and this is the same map that you saw on the website yeah and this one i actually the second uh, map that you see here is actually lavalos plants here we don't have uh, any images uh, chosen for the mobile app but this is where you will see lavalos plant images as well i think again we'll choose six images per lavalos plant so those data are still being uh, uh, added so fahim and rajat are mostly doing that work um and then this information that you see below the image gallery is not there for all the uh, species pages right now. In fact, we may have done it only for plain tiger, but this is the information. This is the kind of information that we want to make available for all the species, all Indian species. So we'll have status distribution habitat, lava loaf plants, and BOI species page. So if you click on this link, it will take you to the website in case you want to look for additional information. So in the mobile app, we are showing the default image on top. You have image galleries with adult butterfly images, early stages, map, and lava loaf plants, um, which will be this sliding gallery. And then you have information about the species yeah this is the basic format we just launched in april so we have a lot more information to add especially uh, this textual information for more species and wherever we haven't added lavalos plants we'll add lavalos plants and early stages things like that yeah and here again you can uh, uh, open up the taxonomy breadcrumbs on top you can see it goes from papillonoidea which is a super family which includes all butterflies to family subfamily all the way to species yeah so this is how you can go from one place to another just like i showed you earlier from uh, plain tiger page you can go to all of the milkweed butterflies and it will show all the species which occur under this particular uh, uh, family uh, under under this particular subfamily okay so you can see trinums you can see uh, blue tigers you can see orange tigers crows all the things which are under um, this particular subfamily yeah this is how you can navigate so let's go back to the home page and what you see here is the butterfly species list which i've already demonstrated Similarly, you have Lavalos plant list where it will show plants. We haven't put in all these data yet. Slowly, we will uh, uh, do that so that you will have a similar page for plants. Then we have About Us, which will give you in, uh, information about the entire project. And cite this app as has all the people who have contributed. So uh, Rajat uh, Joshi, um, Savita Bharati, H.A. Swati and uh, Fahim Khan. The, this is the team which uh, made all the information which is available on the mobile app uh, so far. If you want to volunteer uh, to populate information here on, on the website, do let us know. We can add you to the team and you can help us develop more content for the mobile app. 
uh, and our editors and reviewers are already doing that. So slowly we'll have more and more information on this. Then we have legally protected species, which is the same page that you saw on the website. So here is a list and it will take you again to the species pages on the website if you like. There's information about butterfly monitoring and you can find this on our um, butterfly monitoring website as well, which is ibms-network.in. You can read more about that there. So these uh, about us legally protected and butterfly monitoring are three information pages. Species list on top will give you butterfly and lavalos plant and then submit observations is the sixth tab where you can choose to do 30 minute counts, daily checklist or location checklist. If you uh, want to submit 30 minute counts, which is a standardized method that we have developed for butterfly monitoring in India or any kind of study where you need to know numbers of butterflies that you see. So that's a method. Again, there's going to be a program next Friday. It hasn't been announced yet, but we'll announce it uh, hopefully tomorrow. So next Friday, we'll talk about butterfly monitoring. And at that time, we'll also talk about the 30 minute count method in detail. And I'll give you an overview of the uh, why do butterfly monitoring? What are the advantages of doing that and so on and so forth. So let's click on uh, 30 minute count and click next. Then it will automatically from your registered account, it will take a data collector and from uh, location, you should always have location uh, open by the way. From the location, it will fetch it from the Google uh, Maps and it says unnamed road, Medoc County, um, uh, Ningchi. So Google Maps actually uh, is treating this as Medoc County, but anywhere else, if you're in Delhi, for example, it will uh, take uh, your Delhi location. And there in cities, it will take the street names and so on and so forth properly. But if you want here, I'm going to say, um, uh, Let's see, uh, let's say Pasighat, Siang uh, district. Arunachal Pradesh and so on and so forth. You can uh, uh, edit this if you like. If you don't want to change that, you can just leave uh, whatever Google shows you as the uh, location. I recommend that if Google is not showing the exact uh, location name that you want, then uh, choose that. If you have additional data collectors, for example, right now I have uh, Ujwala and um, uh, Viraj with me, so I can put in their names as, I want to put in whole names, but to save time, I'll just say um, Ujwala and Viraj right now. Start time, you just uh, click OK to take the current time. But if you are putting in uh, um, 30 minute count from another time, then you can define your start time. OK, then location, latitude, latitude uh, longitude is taken from your location. So you should always keep location on the mobile phone on. Uh, land ownership type, we have created a few. We actually want to create a few more. Habitat, you can again choose from the drop down menu. This again uh, needs to be expanded. Temperature, relative humidity, all these things. If you already have information, you can add that. I will say under notes, it's um, hot and humid. Um, and I will also say, for example, that um, along uh, shaded forest road. Yeah. So I can uh, define some of the conditions under which we are taking the count a little bit better. And then you can uh, hit start. When you start it, it gives you the list of uh, species which we have in the database. It is a complete list. So you can either scroll up and down and you can add, uh, uh, you, if you click on a species, it will add a number. You can go to search and let's say you want to search for um, common Piro. Yeah. So you can just search, I made a spelling mistake, common Piero. Uh, made a mistake once again, common Piero. Yeah. So here I can just uh, 
tap on the name and as you can see the number is going from one to three to four and so on and so forth yeah then let's say you want to search for another name let's say the next butterfly you see is plain tiger so i will search for plain tiger and i will tap that name and that number will add if you don't want to do that you can just go through the list and keep adding names for example the next species i see is let's say uh, pointed cz blue so i'm going to click on that and i saw two of those and you can toggle between this view and the checklist that you are already preparing because often you see the same species along a trail so if you just want to then keep adding let's say you saw two more pointed ciliate blues later then i'm going to tap on that twice and it went from two to four then i see a plain tiger once again then i will uh, add that and you can of course go back to the checklist so this plus sign you see in the top right corner that toggles between the complete list and the list of species which you have chosen okay the plus sign next to that opens a notes comment se uh, section so if you want to add any comments for example saying that uh, these butterflies you are seeing in this half an hour count are feeding on a particular plant or they are mud puddling whatever your comments are you can add them here and once you add the comment you can say okay so this is how uh, you can use these features. And again, if you want to go back to search, you can of course do that. So I'm going to search for glassy and the one I want is glassy tiger. So I will click on that. And if I toggle with that plus sign now, you will see that it is showing the list in which glassy tiger is added. Yeah. So as you keep searching and adding, it will keep on uh, making this longer. But if you want to go to the complete list, you can go there and scroll up and down and look for names. Okay. okay. When you're done with all of this, you're uh, on top, you will see that the time is the clock is uh, ticking. So it started with 0000. zero, zero, zero. Now we are at three minutes. And when we get to 30 minutes, it will automatically stop. Yeah. So it will ask you to cancel or submit. And if you want to cancel the 30 minute count you can cancel it or you can submit while you are uh, submitting data while you are doing the count let's say you are chased by uh, by an elephant and that took five minutes to run away from what you can do is very quickly hit pause and then run so that it's not going to count those five minutes in your 30 minute count once you are safely away then you can uh, uh, resume start again on top then 30 minute count will 30 minute count i want to say sub it says are you sure you want to submit and i will say uh, i can click on these three lines the three horizontal lines that's a menu so if i click there it says home my packs my profile my contributions and so on and so forth here i will click on my contributions it will take me to uh, the list i have just submitted so i click on that list and it will say download observations.csv and if i click download it will download the data which i've just submitted and that actually uh, uh, downloads to your device and from there you can transfer it wherever you like if you go to your my contributions there you can download it uh, i mean uh, this you can do only from mobile uh, uh, app from the mobile uh, phone and then of course you get a csv file which is a tab delimited text file type of a thing it's a data file and uh, you can open it in excel yeah so this is how you can um, uh, contribute, submit observations, and then you can download them. Daily checklists work the same way. It will again take your data collector, additional data collector. Here, instead of start time, it will say start date. So you can choose to, today's date, and we can uh, uh, edit location. Latitude, longitude, it is already taken. If you want to fill in information, about land ownership type, habitat, temperature, and so on, feel free to do it. 
those are not compulsory. Those are not mandatory fields. You can add things in the notes as we did with 30 minute counts and then start, okay? And then you can again uh, put in all the information that you have. Once you put all your uh, checklist in, then you can again hit submit and it will submit that. Of course, once you started, if you want to go back to the app, for example, and again, look at species, uh, you're not sure about certain identification, that is where you can search here. Now, what you will see is if you look at the uh, submit observations tab here, it says your observation is running, which means that it's telling you that you started an observation which you haven't submitted. Yeah, but you want to uh, look here. Let's say you want to look at uh, the plane. Um, uh, let's see, you want to look at the plane hedge blue, or you want to look at any other. Plain Earl, Plain Seller, you can go to that page, you can look those things up. And when you are done, you can go back to your submit observations and it will uh, it will have retained all the information. You just say, go to tracking and it will show you uh, all the things that you had. Here we had not added any species, but if we had, let's say, added some Abhisara Ateniata, some Abhisara Kela, these things will be retained when you go back to that uh, thing and then you can submit when you like. I'm going to hit cancel here because you don't want to submit this, yeah? So are you sure you want to cancel? Yes, okay. So this is what the mobile app is about. So first of all, in the species pages, as I mentioned, you this is uh, the mobile app by the way works online as well as offline. So you can take this uh, to Namdafa where you don't have phone reception uh, and this will still work. The submit observations in that case, get saved on your mobile and whenever you have internet, it will transmit it to the website so that uh, all your observations can be organized that way. But if you're offline, all of these features will still work. Okay, observations also as soon as you hit submit. So this is uh, what the mobile app is like. And this is truly something that we are excited about data contribution has become much more easy and we will add various other kinds of data submission uh, systems as well um, which i can describe later and of course species pages are there which is a super fun thing which is a great community resource so please use this and the website these are truly the best resources on indian butterflies that you have and this is something that you can contribute to we highly encourage you to contribute to this. This is a community resource which is completely driven by um, ordinary citizens uh, as well as experienced naturalists and professional scientists. So everybody really. And we really depend on this for all kinds of things from enjoying butterflies in the field to doing scientific studies. So be a user absolutely of the website and the mobile app, but also be a contributor. Uh, a community is uh, much better when more people contribute to it, of course, and become part of it. So that's my, my uh, uh, urging to you that you should really become a contributor, not just in grow. India is approaching 1.4 billion people. If less than 1%, uh, let's say 0.01% of Indians start using the app and the uh, website, and start contributing, we are going to end up with millions of observations on Indian butterflies. And that's going to be a great community resource for everything from knowing more about our butterflies in the neighborhood to knowing butterflies in... Now, this is going to be used by forest department. It is going to be used by city governments. It's going to be used by everybody who wants to use information to protect butterflies, to create butterfly gardens, to uh, use this as an educational tool. So I think if all of us contribute a little bit, at least some of us can be heavy contributors, of course, but if all of us contribute even a little bit, I think we are going to generate such massive information on Indian butterflies that it's going to help us conserve these butterflies. So it's not just a tool for enjoyment of butterflies, it has a much bigger um, impact, potential impact as well on butterfly conservation, on society, on education, on conservation. 
So please, please use the, these resources um, as intensively as you can. Be a contributor, join the community. And I hope to grow as a community uh, when you all join. Thanks a lot. That was my presentation. I'll ask Sanjay and Viraj if they want to add anything. Otherwise, we'll go to Q&A. And uh, that way, we might address a few more questions that you have. Uh, Krishna, maybe there are two questions that need uh, to be addressed. One is, uh, okay. someone said that the packs are not downloading. Okay. And uh, another question was that I downloaded the Bangalore pack on the mobile, but I see butterflies from all over India in the image list. Is this expected? Yes. So uh, when you download a pack, I think if you just choose Bangalore, only images of species which occur in uh, uh, Bangalore will be downloaded. So fewer images will be downloaded, I think. So this is something that I'm uh, becoming familiar myself. This app was developed by a web developer and uh, I need to see how things have been uh, configured. So uh, the entire species list of Indian butterflies is seen when you go to butterfly species list. When you go to submit observations, there again, you have the complete list of Indian butterflies. But when you download a pack, only images of species from Bangalore or Delhi or Jammu and Kashmir will be downloaded is my understanding. That is how we had asked them to configure. If that is not what you're seeing, then let me know. But I think this is what you're gonna see. So pack means that you're only downloading information of species which are listed in that pack. So Bangalore has a species list of 179 species. Recently, uh, uh, somebody has reported one more species which we will add now. So uh, we will continuously, every year we'll keep on updating these uh, pack lists for every single city that we have and every single state that we have. We will also add Western Guards. So if you're doing surveys all over the Western Guards, then you will have all the 337 or so species which are known in the Western Guards appear in that particular pack. There's going to be a Northeast India pack, which will have all the Northeastern species, some 900 or 1000 species. I'll have to look up uh, how many species are there. Uh, but those 900 plus species will be in the Northeastern pack. Then we'll have Western Himalaya pack. And these we will call biodiversity hotspot packs. So the Western Guards goes across multiple states, Northeast India, Western Himalaya go across multiple states. But these are very well-known biodiversity hotspots. So we have created packs for those as well. The state packs are not released yet. Only Jammu and Kashmir uh, Union Territory Pack has been released as a test of what we can uh, do. But I think within the next six months or so, we will release state packs for all the states and union territories of India. So that if you are doing this only in Bihar, then you can download images and related data only for Bihar butterflies. If you're doing this all across uh, Northeast India, you can download that pack. So that is the difference between different packs and the information that you download. So the species list is still going to be complete, but the number of images that you download is going to change based on the packs that you download. So packs, if you give it some time, I think they will load. As you saw on my mobile app, earlier there was a wheel going around, but later shows that uh, I could download. So maybe it's an internet issue. Just give it a little bit more time. We will also, if it's taking too long, which it shouldn't, I will check why it's doing that. I can uh, ask the web developers, but I think it should load. So maybe that was a problem, temporary problem. Uh, perhaps because of your internet speed, you can check that and let me know. Yeah. Any other questions? While Viraj and Sanjay are going through the questions, I'll actually add uh, one more thing. In the top bottom corner, you see that download uh, download arrow, downward arrow with a line at the bottom on a blue background. That is a tab. When you download a mobile app, it will show you numbers there. So India currently has 8,000 images which, which I have downloaded saw with one of the species page that I was showing, it was loading images as I scrolled because they had not been downloaded. They were being downloaded as I showed you, uh, as I demonstrated the app. But when you first download the pack, 
it will show you progress here. So it will say two images out of 8,000 something, 100 images out of 8 something. So you can see the progress of downloads. But if it stops, um, as you go to a species page, it will keep on downloading images. So in the background, they uh, will keep smaller packs like Bangalore or Mumbai. Those have only about 175 plus minus some butterflies. So the pack, this is the amount of information which is downloaded is going to be pretty much if you do Western Himalaya or let's say um, Northeast India. Any other questions? So there is a general question. Okay. Like how do we reduce redundancy? In? In the data and the observation. It, it seems like it. So I do not know what you mean by redundancy. Uh, if you mean that there were five people who had gone on a nature trail and they all um, submit observation of the same butterfly that you see. Yeah. So there, every single observation contributed by every single individual is going to count as a separate observation when the butterfly was the same. That's one kind of redundancy I can think of. The second redundancy I can think of is when every image you take of individual it's submitted separately and please don't this is often the side and underside to help with identification or generally to show variation of that particular uh, individual then of course you can upload two images in that same observation and then that redundancy is lowered yeah you're not inflating the number of individuals if you go to that species page. Uh, these are the two redundancies which are relevant to this website. Uh, is there any other kind of redundancy that you are thinking about? So if you were, then just put it in the chat box and these people will read it out to me. So the second redundancy I already mentioned, uh, our observations are for an individual. If you see 10 individuals of let's say plain tiger in a day, then you should add individuals, uh, images of those 10 individuals separately as 10 observations. If you see only one individual uh, in a day, then of course that will be a single observation. So number of observations should be equal number of individuals, not number of species, not number of images. Yeah. And the first redundancy that I mentioned that you have five people in the team, and everyone wants to contribute to the web. So if uh, that is the case, what I will say is that you coordinate and say, okay, for this particular observation, one particular guy will contribute all the images through that account, and then you can upload them that way, so that we are not we don't have five observations of the same individual from different people. But in the larger scheme of things, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Eventually, we are going to have thousands upon thousands of observations of uh, butterflies from all over India. For every single species. If that is the case, I mean, minor thing, so I won't really worry about it. Uh, if there is any, is there an explanation of what redundancy they meant? No. Okay, good. Any other questions? No, not okay, then let's wait for five minutes. Let's see if people have any more questions or comments. And uh, Sonal, can we actually make it possible for people to speak now? Yeah, sure. So if um, people want to ask questions directly, let them uh, ask. Uh, yeah, they'll have to uh, send us a message on the Q&A section so we can uh, allow them, like we can allow mic usage for them. If anybody oh, wants to uh, ask uh, any questions. If anybody wants to speak, ask a question directly. Yeah. So just mm -hmm. uh, uh, send a chat message and Sonal, who is with the office in NCBS, she will uh, uh, enable your mic. There's another question, which is, can you add sharing checklist like eBird with five observers uh, on the app? Sharing meaning? Meaning like if we have five people on a count and I do the count, then uh, is there an option where we can share the checklist with five other users so that- Oh, you uh, mean just share it uh, as a personal, uh, as an individual user? 
No, in eBird, for example, there's an option that if I go on account and huh. uh, there are five people with me, hmm. so at the end of the account, I can share that and that automatically gets imported into their database. So I think ah, okay. this is a feature no, that no, doesn't no. exist now. Yeah, we don't have that yet. Yeah, but that is something we can probably look at in the future. In the future, yeah. I mean, there's a lot more development that needs to happen. Of course, eBird is uh, a much older platform. They have developed this a lot earlier. Slowly, we'll uh, start developing a lot of features there uh, in our mobile app. But of course, we don't have this particular one that you uh, mentioned. We also do not have the ability to edit uh, observations, which have already been submitted through the mobile app. So if you have submitted a 30 minute count, for example, you can't go back to it and change it in the mobile app. That's something that we'll have to uh, add uh, in the next round of developments. Any other questions? I think the only other thing that, uh, you know, Sanjay, the only other thing that I would like to add is that can, uh, if people are facing any issues, hmm. uh, please do let us know because uh, the fact is that, you know, it's a new app, it's been operational only for the last three or four months. So do let us know if there are some features that you are facing issues with so that uh, we can look into it. Absolutely. Uh, is there any actually email address that we can share if anyone has any query or something they can write to? We can, uh, they can do that. that. There's a contact form on the website. So okay. if you go to the uh, if you go to the um, menu bar, menu uh, footer, there is a contact us uh, link at the bottom. If you click on that, there's a form which opens up. You can uh, uh, submit your query through that. Or I found butterflies. These things are there under contact us. Wherever there's a contact us link on the website, the text that is linked to my email address. So you can also use that from any of the web pages on the website. And when you click there, it will uh, uh, open up an email box and you can send me a message through that. But contact us form goes to a particular email address where multiple people can see it and we will get to that. But feel free to uh, write to any of us. And by any of us, I mean any of the reviewers and editors on the website. Fahim is quite active. Savita Bharti is quite active. Uh, Rajat, Sanjay, uh, Viraj, all of us are quite active. Um, so just write uh, to us if you are in contact with some of these people on WhatsApp, um, you can also do that. What you can do is, let me actually go to um, my, mobile phone uh, and can you see my, uh, right now I'm on the books page, Butterflies of Bengaluru page. So this is what I see, but if I want to, um, go to any of these, my uh, links, you can just click from there. And about us, contact us, this one here. When you click on that, it will open up a contact us form. This is what I was talking about. Uh, yeah, this is the website feedback. You can uh, fill it in and then send the message. The second thing I wanted to tell you is that, um, let me go to the home page actually. So when I click on on this platform, uh, comprehensive database on all sorts of things about butterfly biology, not just presence absence data, which eBird and others do, but they don't have any other uh, other information on their mobile app doesn't have that information. In fact, the mobile app, you can only uh, submit information, but you can't really, you don't have species pages and so on. We have that on the website as well as the mobile app. So this is quite a nice platform that we have developed 
but we also want to develop the community a lot better. One of the first things that we have mentioned and get involved is become a regional coordinator. We are looking for state coordinators, district coordinators, city coordinators. So if you want to do that, please write in to us. We uh, had created a, a Google form which we will call it information as next month particularly I'm back in Bangalore and we want to have an extensive page for every the um, and his group is organized as yeah so all the activities uh, activities as well as other information on what projects they're running where they're doing their butterfly and moth uh, counting and this sort of things are mentioned in that form and on that page so we want to have a page for every single project which is associated with the butterflies of india website we want to have a separate page for every single uh, organization which is part of this every single larger project which is organized around uh, collecting data on moths butterflies whatever feature whatever animal group you're working on so each website will have this so we do want you to be a coordinator. We do want you to uh, volunteer for BOI. So just read the information there and we want to have pages for all these local projects, coordinators and so on. So please volunteer, get in touch if you have any questions. So if you uh, want to uh, volunteer in a way different from what is listed here and we'll always be happy to get you involved as a team member. So use this as well. As as you can and as i mentioned next month once i go back to bangalore we'll become much more active uh, with these things and you want to have all these community resources as well as information on the individual uh, teams and projects on the website which will start from next month any other questions we are just in there so now what is the number of uh, number of uh, participants we have right now uh it's 39 right now oh okay so it's been more than an hour so yeah. it has gone down um yeah okay if there are no other questions we'll stop now it was nice to talk about the website and the mobile app and again i look forward to seeing this community grow a lot larger and we'll meet you again next friday to discuss butterfly monitoring yeah, and we've uh, shared the post on twitter facebook and uh, ncbs linkedin so do check that out and register soon great all right thank you sonal sanjay viraj and everybody else who organized all of this and uh, i'll see you next friday enjoy butterflies okay thank you krishna everyone